I am being pressured to give money to a child that's legally mine, and I don't want to. Small detail before I begin the story. I'm from Europe, and the system in here is a bit different than in the US. I, 46 male, have four children. Three are biologically mine, one is my wife's affair baby. The oldest one is Olivia, 26, twins males are 22, and the youngest Emma is currently 17. I discovered that Emma wasn't mine about two to three months after the birth. From the first time I've seen her, we didn't look anything alike, and I was quite suspicious but ignored it for the time being. I just didn't think that my ex would cheat on me, and I just hoped that I was imagining things. Then after two months, I decided to do a paternity test, and just to be sure if our baby wasn't mixed up, I did one for my wife as well. The results arrived after a few weeks, and not surprisingly, the kid isn't mine, and there was no baby mix-up. I filed for divorce shortly after. The divorce was long, expensive, and ugly, but at the end, it got 50-50 custody for the twins and Olivia. As for the youngest, I had to pay child support. I tried to fight it with evidence that the kid wasn't mine, but the court verdict was that she was legally mine, so I had to pay it, unless the father of the youngest would show up and take responsibility. My ex absolutely refused to tell anyone who the father was and claimed it was just a few nightstands and doesn't know who the guy is. As a result, I'm stuck paying child support for 18 years. I told my ex that without child support, she wouldn't receive anything else from me, that I won't be a father for Emma, and I don't want to see her. After the divorce was finalized, I moved to a different city. I just wanted a fresh start, and it was difficult, but everything worked out except for dating. I tried learning to trust again, but it was extremely difficult. And at the end, after many failed relationships, I ended up single. The main issue was I couldn't trust anyone except my kids and family, and that mainly destroyed every single relationship I had. I tried therapy, but that led basically nowhere. After a few years, when Olivia was 14, she got in a huge fight with my ex and decided to live with me. The fight with her mother happened because she wanted to take Olivia's money that she was saving. As a result, Olivia wanted to stay away from her mother, and she decided to live with me until she was 20. Here is where the problem begins. For my children, I was saving money, and each got 65,000 euros after they finished school. I tried to teach them to not waste money and invest, but at the end, it was up to them. Fortunately, they invested the money smartly, and are currently living independently. But the problem started when my ex started hinting about Emma. Asking when will she receive money like her other siblings? At first, I thought she was joking and jokingly said, when her real father shows up. She got extremely angry and started yelling about how bad a father I am, and that joke was inappropriate. I got angry myself and said that she should have thought about that before cheating, and that I already paid for a child who wasn't mine for almost 18 years. At the end, I blocked her number and went about my day. That evening, Emma called me and asked why she won't receive anything. I politely said that she knows that she isn't my child. She got angry, yelled that this wasn't fair, and hung up. My ex keeps calling with different numbers and keep yelling what a bad person I am. I can afford it. Obviously, it would leave a dent in my savings, but at the same time, I don't want to do it. Me and Emma never had a relationship. Maybe we would speak two or three times a year. But at the same time, I feel guilty for excluding and punishing her for what my ex did. Now for the top comments. If the kid is 17 already, wouldn't that mean you only have one more year to pay support for Emma? Or are you saying you need to pay child support for Emma until she's 35? The remaining time is less than a year. No, my ex just wants to get more money from me, and that's probably it. Pay until the end. Keep them locked. Tell Emma to find her bio father. And finally, move on. And when she finds her bio dad, sue him and the ex. I won't achieve anything with that. Even if the father appears now and admits everything, I wouldn't get any compensation for those years. It's best to just let go. What happened already happened. You have paid a child support that was court-ordered for a child that biologically isn't yours. You have made those payments in full. That is the end of your obligation to that child. Your ex decided to cheat and not go after the bio dad for child support, etc. I'm sorry, but you don't owe that child anything else. You didn't raise her. You were just forced to pay for them. Your ex can give them some money. Keep your money and use it for your retirement or for your future grandchildren. Totally agree with this. I would even go as far as to add up all the child support payments you had to make and show the total amount to both of them. 
I'm going to guess it's a whole hell of a lot more than 65k in euros. Reckon what her approach would have been had her roles been reversed. She has to understand she's being obtuse and greedy. I'm sure if Opie brought home an affair baby, she would be ever so gracious. She's even grosser not disclosing her dad to her and dragging her into her messy drama. What a mother. Not your child, not your problem. It's bad enough you had to pay child support for 18 years. It's the mother's fault for never trying to find her real father. Oh, I think the mother knew all along who the father was. Next story. My wife has been cheating on me for a year. I plan to divorce her as soon as our child is in childcare. My wife and I have been married for five years, and our child was born just over a year ago. I thought we were happy, but my wife became distant soon after. She stopped being interested in intimacy, stopped showing any affection towards me. She seemed to enjoy spending time with me less and less with each passing week and month. I have tried talking to her about it, but she has blocked any effort from me. I wasn't able to reach her. Then about three months ago, I saw a notification on her phone. I wasn't snooping, I just wanted to pause the music she had playing. But there it was. Can't wait to see you tonight. I've been hard all day. It was a text from her male best friend. My heart skipped a few beats. I started to look through her phone and found loads of texts going back months. Nude pictures, dirty talk, everything. I wanted to throw up. Apparently, they started getting closer a few weeks after the child was born and started sleeping together around three months after the birth. All those nights she went out with her girlfriends, she actually spent at his house. I wanted to confront her, to leave her and be done with her. But we have a child that needs us. I knew I couldn't take care of a child alone, at least not until he would go to kindergarten. And I knew she certainly could not take care of him alone. Besides, I couldn't ever stand being apart from my little boy. So I made a plan. I collected as much evidence as possible and kept my mouth shut. I stopped trying to get closer to her, keep my head down, and just take care of our child with all my heart. But the moment he is settled in at kindergarten when he is two years old, I'll divorce my wife and try to get custody of my boy. And that is my situation. I've got to endure a bit more than a year of this broken marriage, pretend that I don't know what she is doing, and keep things civil. There is no one in my life I can talk to about this. I cry myself to sleep when she is out with the girls, knowing what she is actually doing. I gotta stay strong for my boy. I love you, little one. Edit, since everyone in the comments is telling me to get a paternity test, thank you for your advice. I already did. He is my child. Talk to an attorney and make your exit plan. Right here. Waiting a year is too long. Kindergarten isn't the only childcare option out there for toddlers. I'm guessing your wife isn't just carrying on an affair, but making her own exit plan. As crappy as it sounds, like you are trying to win the divorce, you want to do everything you can to have a leg up in all court proceedings moving forward, and talking to an attorney immediately will best position you. If she initiates first, she could claim that the two of you had discussed ending the relationship already before she started seeing her friend, would still qualify as adultery, but put her in a much better light in court especially if she can prove you were aware of the affair and didn't do anything. Yeah, she definitely is making an exit plan, if it's been going on this long. She's probably waiting six more months and then giving divorce papers to OB. She's not waiting till this kid is in kindergarten. What will you do if she and her affair partner decide they want to get together before this year timeline is up? She might go for emergency full custody and then you miserably waited for nothing. Also, be mindful of her friends trying to either support you, as some of them definitely knew what she was doing. Their guests like you that her friendship with the guy was platonic. You will get a lot of lies and a range of emotions from her once you confront her. Be prepared. There is no way all the evidence I have can be discarded. I know what she is doing, and she is not being very clever about it. Most of our friends are actually her friends. I am not a very outgoing guy and had not a lot of friends before meeting her. So I'm fully prepared to be on my own once things come out. If there was no child, I just cut contact with her. But for our son, I'll try to be as civil as possible while setting firm limits. Our child needs his mom. Edit 2. Thank you all so much for your feedback and suggestions. To clarify a few things, as I already said yesterday, I had a paternity test done to make sure the kid is mine. He is, but it would not have changed anything for me anyway, at least not how I feel about him. I am talking to an attorney. 
I have been working with them for a while, gathering evidence and building a case. I am prepared in case my wife decides to act before I plan to do. Thirdly, sole custody is not my goal nor my preference. Optimally, I will go for some form of custody agreement with me being the primary caregiver. I don't want to take his mom for my little boy, but I am prepared for the worst. Many of you disagree with my opinion to keep my wife's infidelity quiet. Let me clarify. In any legal proceedings, I will not hesitate to use what evidence I have gathered. But I will not go around advertising my wife's actions to our friends and family, or worse, to our boy. I will make damn sure his relationship with his mom stays as untainted as possible. I am aware that she might use some dirty tactics and may not be as respectful as I plan to be, which is why I am prepared for any eventuality with my lawyer. Sorry about the confusion regarding kindergarten, daycare, and childcare. I have used those terms interchangeably. In my country, children can be externally cared for from as young as a few months old. But that is rare. Most commonly, children are put in external care at 2 to 5 years old, depending on the situation. In our case, child care under the age of 2 is not available. And our financial situation is a bit more complicated than I care to elaborate. Suffice it to say, I have done my research and have determined that external child care is not feasible or affordable until he is 2. And me staying home to care for him full-time is also not feasible. So, to be sure I can take care of him all by myself, in case the separation goes less than smooth, I am waiting until he is regularly going to external child care. Last story, I let my niece be adopted. Some people judge me for it, but I think I made a right choice. I love my sister Maggie. She and I had a very rough childhood, and it bonded us. We were raised around drugs, alcohol, and abuse. I managed to escape, went to college, and made something of my life. Maggie wasn't as lucky. She fell in love with a dealer, began using, and entered into an awful marriage. I begged her to leave, offered her a spare room, rehab, etc. I even bailed her out of jail more times than I can count, but she just gets sober, leave him, and then go back. Then she told me she was pregnant. She was so excited. She was in a sober spell, still with her husband, but swore things were different now. He was going to live the life. He promised her. It took all I had not to cry at her naivete. My beautiful niece Harlow was born, and I did my best to protect her. At one point, social services were called on them. CPS did an investigation, and Maggie was distraught. She begged me that if Harlow entered the system, I'd take her. I couldn't let her be adopted. I promised her I would, and the CPS investigation was eventually closed. At one point, Maggie and I had a falling out. I was once again trying to help her leave, get sober, etc., but she refused and cut me out entirely. The husband had left her and moved on to someone else. Maggie moved without telling me, got a new number, and that was that. I was distraught. Three years later, I got a call that my sister was gone. Coke overdose. I immediately asked about Harlow, and all they could tell me was that she wasn't there. It took a lot of calls, but I eventually uncovered that Harlow had been taken from Maggie a year and a half prior after she was caught buying substances. Now, according to those who know my sister, she swore up and down that she told them about me and that she wanted her place with me. Social services said they tried to locate me but couldn't. I managed to get visitation with Harlow. By this time, she was seven years old. I didn't think she'd remember me, but she smiled and ran into my arms for a hug. She said she missed me so much. She told me all about her foster parents, her new house. She was so happy and healthy. I met her foster parents, and they were lovely people. So kind, gracious, and loving. I watched as the dad gave her a piggyback ride to their car. Harlow had a huge smile on her face and was giggling. I realized how happy she was. I had several visits with Harlow. Social services told me I could file for kinship and explain the process. I was all for it and began speaking with my partner about the process. Harlow was turning eight, and we were closing in on her spending nearly two years with her foster parents. They invited me and my partner to the birthday party. She had so many friends from school there. She was clearly attached to not only her foster parents, but their families. She had a huge house with a yard. The foster parents had two older sons who were so good with her. It was like they were a family. The foster mom told me that prior to me showing up, they planned on adopting Harlow, but understood that she may end up with me. She offered to support me in that, but I could tell it was breaking her heart. So the next visit, I asked Harlow how she'd feel about moving in with me. She got sad and asked about her foster family. She referenced them as mommy and daddy. It was in that moment I knew. This was her new family. 
I asked if she wanted them to be her forever family, and she said yes. So I denied taking on kinship. We have no other family, and her biological father's was not interested. I then wrote a letter to the judge blessing the foster parents to adopt Harlow. It wasn't necessary, but I figured I'd try to help as much as possible. Six months later, Harlow was adopted. Harlow is now 13. I'm still her aunt. Her parents invite me to dinner. I go to birthday parties. They came over to our house on Christmas Eve, and we exchanged presents. Harlow is in therapy for her early years, but is happy now and thriving. Her parents are so loving and caring. Some people in my sister's life have judged me. Maggie wanted her with me after all. My partner's brother was adopted, and he didn't agree with my choice. He feels children should stay with biological families. He has a lot of trauma from his adoption, and he knows Harlow will too. He says one day she may hate me for this. And yet... I'm okay with that. Tearing her from that family would have been so selfish. She's happy and thriving in that home. I feel like she does stay with her biological family by you being in her life. You don't live together, but the fact that you are there for her must make her feel not really abandoned. I think it sounds great. She has so many adults who love her. I wish I had someone outside my family growing up who cared as much as you do. Right? OB is her aunt and stays her aunt. Nothing is changing that. She still has her relationship with her. Me and my sister had a conversation about what happens to my niece if God forbid both her and her husband died. She said she wanted her daughter to go to her friends and how I felt about it. I said it was the best option, and I'm not hurt at all. I don't have a lot of money. I live in an apartment with roommates because I can't afford to live alone. I'm a chef and requires long hours, working weekends and holidays. And the most important thing, I don't like kids or ever want them. It would be a hard transition for my niece because she doesn't know them as well as me. But long term, it would be best. They have good jobs in the house. If she came with me, I would have to uproot my whole life and would have to do it all on my own. I wouldn't be around much because of work. This scenario is not good for either of us. I would still be in her life if she went to my sister's friends. But me taking kinship of her would be a bad decision for me. And more importantly, her.